नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्ते शमला दीदी नमस्ते एवरीवन वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन नमस्ते रजन भैया नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्ते तो वी हैव राजुल जी शेयरिंग टुडे राजुल जी इज ऑलवेज अ कोइस फॉर विद ऑल ऑफ अस हेल्पिंग इन ऑल आवर जर्नी in the usp proposals so bhaiya needs uh, no introduction to uh, the audience so i welcome this uh, mccip member rajul ji for his uh, sharing in the morning session today rajul ji over to you thank you yeah. uh, good morning all uh, my name is rajul asthana uh, i'm from uh, uttar pradesh there is a small village called sandila near hardwoi although we have never lived there but uh, we draw our ancestry from there married to uh, dr sharmila astana we have two sons and we live in hyderabad i always felt that uh, i had a privileged life we never had any major ups and downs in life and uh, but there was always this question uh, what is the purpose of my life and now i can say uh, one has to decide what to do at every moment so if there is clarity of that purpose then what to do at every moment is quite clear so this question was always there because always there was some gap and earlier i was not able to identify what the gap was and so that motivated me to look for things i used to read a lot uh, when i was in class 7 uh, 8 i used to read at least one book every day and uh, i was looking for some answer i didn't know what question i had but the uh, i was looking for some answer i was maybe at that time it was to just spend time but there was this question i can articulate the question now but earlier it was not very clear now in 2006 first time uh, i came across uh, universal human values and at that time i was looking for something for my company something that would help uh, our uh, new associates to become more responsible because that was the most uh, crucial thing that i found uh, lacking in uh, our uh, associates and lacking in many of us me also so that is what we were looking for something that would help us to become more responsible at that time i had articulated it like that at that time i was uh, working for a software company and i was a senior vice president in charge of the learning center so we used to hire something like 12000 uh, engineers at the year and i was responsible for their initial training and other things also but that was one of the things so something important this is something important that is what came to my mind at uh, in that time in 2006 and i must make it available or help my uh, colleagues to uh, to go through uhv and they should teach the associates that is where i started with but then um, when i attended the next workshop i think it was in december of 2008 then it became more clear that it is not for others it is for me and since 2010 i have been spending uh, more time Uh, on on this 
I went to Kanpur and spent about uh, 10 years there, uh, more or less full time, maybe 20 days in a month. And through all of that, uh, some of the things that came to mind, which are relevant for this session, I think, I mean, this sharing, is that this what to do is still a small part of what happens. So, although I have to work on this what to do for myself, but many other things happen. This what to do or this my sanskar is only the seed and what happens, uh, there is a large tree that happens. From a small seed this happens. So, what I'm doing is a small part. What is happening is much more than that. But this, what I do is very important also for my own happiness also and for others. And I can see that I've been making many mistakes and still there are many mistakes and I need to work on that. Now this uh, doing what happens and what I do, both of them happen by some existential laws. And I have to understand these. My happiness and unhappiness is only an indicator. This doing is a collective and collaborative effort. I mean, if we look at the cells of my body, they are all working together. So for humans also, it is similar uh, collective and collaborative effort. This ego and this my, I am doing, those are uh, uh, something that we assume. So this need for understanding and dissolving the accumulated sanskars, these are two important things that I could see that need to be done. Now, a few months ago, I became aware of a very strong uh, sanskar that got triggered uh, that time. And I could see that I am uh, still impatient. I am paying too much attention to the problems, what is not, what remains to be done. Uh, and less on the things that have happened that, uh, you know, those things that uh, the good part of it, the uh, what has been done, that kind of, that part. So that is basically my motivation for joining the morning session, this particular morning session. Although I wasn't able to attend all of it, I uh, did try to attend most of it and I wrote my diary this time uh, quite extensively. Uh, I am grateful to those who have helped me to surface this and scar. And uh, because it is helping me to pay attention to what I really am. And I want to work on it. So it looks sometimes I think that life is a series of events. And all these events, all the people, they are trying to help me to pay attention to something if I look into the meaning of these events. So, for example, uh, in 98, 97 rather, 97 December, my mother was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer. At that time, we were living in the US and we decided that we uh, would move back uh, to India to take care of my mother. And that's, otherwise we would have probably stayed there. We were there for 16 years. So we would have continued to stay there. Uh, so that was an event, which was not a very happy event, but it helped us to see that our place is over here. Like that, there are so many incidents that, uh, are, are there and that is why I just said that I am thankful to uh, those who have helped to surface this sanskar 
And it, of course, has to do with the same things, the attachment, the aversion, and the ego. I am special, those kind of things. Uh, for so many years, I thought that those things were uh, re resolved, but they're not resolved. They're coming up. So these uh, things are what motivated me to come for this morning session, and I've done quite uh, a bit of it. Uh, it reinforces the point that uh, happiness is not from outside. It is an influence. Uh, it's not an influence. It has to be uh, something from inside. It has reinforced that, but still uh, we have, have to work on that. I mean, intellectually you can say yes, that is the case, but uh, still have to go a long way in uh, ensuring it 100%. If I take uh, uh, estimate, <laughs> it is a small percentage uh, if I see that. Earlier I could see my exercise one, step one to three. I lumped them together. Earlier, I could see my thoughts. I could even see uh, that I can change my thoughts. But I used to, that time, think that only, this is a long time back, only action matters. What I think, what I imagine is my own business. I used to think that. But now I can see that it is my own business. I am living with myself 100% of the time. It is my own business, but it is also the business of everybody else because it affects everybody else also. So looking into my thoughts, I was able to see my feelings uh, reasonably more clearly now. Although I still can't identify the exact feeling, but I can very easily observe that uh, what is happening inside. Now, probably this is the first time, I would say, where I could keep on observing uh, what is happening uh, without reacting outside that much. In the experiences that are not comfortable, I can even I even observe that there is shallowness of breath, there is pain in the chest, there is tingling in the fingers, stress in the toes, and even some uh, shivering kind of sensation. So all these things are happening in the body, but. Inside, I can see that this that my I'm not comfortable. Similarly, when I am comfortable, I can observe that there is a sensation in the body uh, also. There is a sensation on the forehead. There is a sort of a tingling sensation from the head to shoulders, and like that, you know. So that is the effect on the body also. So I could observe uh, this feeling. Now, if I keep observing the feeling without reacting, then I am able to see that the discomfort slowly becomes dull. And then if I can continue to bear the whatever the pain that is, then it becomes dull and then it sort of disappears. So I was trying to see, uh, or rather to articulate it in this way that if I can bear like a mosquito bite, I observe it, it becomes dull after some time. But if I start scratching that, then uh, it keeps on going for a long time, even after uh, perhaps 
you know, many minutes. So in maybe not in the same way, but this I can see now more clearly that if I keep on observing uh, my feeling and other things also, my thoughts, and without reacting, then the discomfort keeps on becoming, I mean, it slowly becomes less, but I have to keep on observing it. When I recollect past issues now, I have got over many of these uh, sanskars. But this time, this particular sanskar, I think, is uh, uh, now getting a little dull, but uh, I can see that I have to work on it. And I'm because many times I'm slipping down and reacting also. Because I'm trying to escape from that discomfort. And that escape, you all know, uh, it is uh, going and filling the time with some work or filling the time with some eating or something else, you know. So those kind of things also I can observe. But uh, I can see that in this case, uh, there is that uh, slowly this dullness is there, is coming to that point. The good thing about this step one to three is that I am able to see what is going on. And I am feeling less guilty, less scared that because my uh, I've, I've, I've been able to decide, I think more or less decide that I have to pay this attention inside. And this decision is important. I have to pay attention and I have to uh, not react. So in step one, this decision uh, is very important. And in the past also, when I recollect the decisions that uh, I have made and stuck to those decisions, those good decisions rather, those proper decisions, uh, it has been helpful, although it has been difficult, but it has been helpful. So in step one, uh, <clears throat> this observation, <clears throat> observation and not reacting, even though there is a, a significant discomfort, uh, that is the main thing from step one. And that is the main thing that I wanted to sort of share this time. But there are other points, few points I will share and then uh, close now. But this for this round of uh, observation, this was the main conclusion. Step one, uh, step four, exercise one, <clears throat> who decides this question? This was the killer question, <clears throat> always. This was the main uh, question uh, that got my attention even the first time <clears throat> was, it is me who is deciding. I am with myself 100% of the time and I am deciding. Because I, I could always earlier also see that I can change my thoughts. Now I can see that it is possible to, to change uh, the feeling also. And the change the feeling through thought will be temporary only, but that is possible. And the change in the feeling will become more permanent when I see the uh, reality directly. Step five. On what basis did I decide, assumption or understanding? I still think that it is <clears throat> still almost 100% assumption only. Assumptions have changed and many times assumptions have, the old assumption is also there and the new assumption is also there. And uh, sometimes one assumption comes up and sometimes the other assumption comes up. 
Now I can see those things more clearly. And I can also see some of the assumptions that uh, I am giving by. <clears throat> and one of the assumptions is that uh, from my side, I must add value. I must leave things better than I found them. So this is a uh, one assumption. But there are so many other assumptions that I've been able to see. Uh, I've written them down. But uh, this is one assumption that uh, I thought I'll share. Now, with all these assumptions, what I'm trying to do is to image life with the right feeling. What will uh, I do or what will I think? Rather, what will I think? What will I do? What will life be like with the right feeling? If not this feeling, then what? So what is my natural acceptance? If I am living with my natural acceptance, what will I do at this moment? So that is the, ex I mean, in step five, that is what I'm trying to do. Step six and seven, uh, obviously those feelings uh, that are uh, for harmony, uh, relationship and coexistence, those are naturally acceptable. Relationship means I want to be happy and I want to make the other happy. Harmony means that things are in the order in which they should be, but their their natural order. And coexistence is still not so clear, but have a lot of details about it. Uh, that is information for me. And there is need to understand the underlying these things, this relationship, harmony and coexistence, that I can see. And important thing is that I have to understand. Earlier, when I went for the first workshop also, I used to think that, and I had read a lot of things that a guru will be there and he or she will place their hand on the forehead and there will be a flash and all that. I used to think like that. Of course, I have to do I have to understand the reality. I have to understand the existential law. I have to do the exploration. And I have to uh, bear the heat that is generated by these uncomfortable feelings that are there. And uh, bear the thought that I am not as great as I think I I used to think I am. Or, uh, but still, keep going rather than get uh, this thing. So this uh, is from step six and seven. So I only have to observe from the pure observer, which is I'm uh, able to do it very few moments in a day. It's uh, not there all the time. I have to keep on observing without reaction and I have to do my right evaluation. Many times uh, others do over evaluation, under evaluation, and I also do over evaluation, under evaluation many times. So I have to do my right evaluation and work on it. Underlying flow, I can see sometimes that the underlying flow is one of uh, order, it's not disorder. This is very interesting that I only have to observe and what is happening naturally is something which is harmony, which is harmonious. And I only have to decide and stay with that decision. So basically uh, I can see uh, 
that it is the step one that is the most significant step and maybe the only step for for me i mean for anybody we have to start from that uh, as far as exercise 2 is concerned it is quite clear that i am not just the body i am not just the sensation i am not the sensation that I read the sensation, I give meaning to it. But I still have to work a lot on uh, on all of this. A uh, lot of imagination is there. But this thought is always there that this body is temporary. And because I want to add value or I want to do something which is going to be useful, I try to finish my homework uh, every night. Only then I sleep. And sometimes it might be late also, but every day I think that this body is temporary. I take a backup of whatever I've done when I travel because uh, the body is temporary. And I want to leave something that can be useful. So I keep taking backup. I have backups in uh, Kanpur and Hyderabad and So this backup is there because this is quite clear that the body is temporary. And this vague idea that I've been here before, I've seen some places before. When I came to Hyderabad, first time this was, I think, in 1971, although that was not the first time, but this time when you came to Hyderabad in 71, there were so many places that I was supposedly visiting for the first time, but I could see that it is, I could see that there'll be a tree here and there'll be this thing, that thing. So, this uh, vague idea that uh, body is temporary, but there are many cycles. So, is that idea, and that's just a thought. I mean, I think it's just an assumption at this time, not very firm about it, but with that thought, uh, when I return the next round, I hope to find this UHV knowledge so that what is remaining, a lot of it which is remaining can be still worked on. So I have a deep sense to secure this knowledge somewhere and, you know, <laughs> all that. So with that, a lot of effort I have been making outside. And it's no excuse for not working inside, but uh, that is where I've been spending more of my time on the material, on the infrastructure, on the systems. So that's uh, uh, so. Whenever I have a sort of uh, thought that uh, you know something can be done in these things, I keep on working on that outside. But my main takeaway from this is that I have to observe uh, from the pure observer level and uh, continue to observe without reacting. Not only reacting outside, but reacting inside. And I have to stay with my decision. And I am happy to say that I am able to move and this major sanskar has become a little bit uh, uh, dull now and I am confident that uh, it will uh, I will be able to resolve it over a period of time. So that's it from my side. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, thank you so much, Rajivji, for this sharing. Each and every point which you shared that is helping in our journey also. So thank you so much. Kumarki Namaste. Over to you. Namaste Bhaiya. Namaste Rajul Bhaiya. Namaste Kumar. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> so let me share my affection for Rajul Bhaiya. In fact, from the day Bhaiya joined the program, we have been working closely together. And when I first met him and looked at him, 
I was wondering how a simple person like this can ever be the senior vice president of a company. How can people obey a naive person like him? So I kept on wondering and also sharing with Sham many times that does it really appeal to you? <laughs> so like that kind of personality Bhaiya has been. And I can see the deep commitment that he has. He spends, spends almost whole day working for promoting the programs of human values, documenting things, analyzing various data, always trying to make things better. Many times we get perturbed also that now the content in the slides is okay. Why should somebody rework on the content? But Bhaiya has a kind of uh, uh, thing where he tries to continuously improve upon whatever is existing. So this continuous improvement is something very particular of Rajul Bhaiya, where he keeps on trying by himself. Uh, and I have been working close together with Bhaiya maybe for the past 15 years or 16 years. And sometimes there have been some differences of opinion also. But we all appreciate the way Bhaiya has been working consistently and the way Bhaiya has uh, completely transformed the whole way in which the program is uh, uh, going ahead. Earlier, we used to conduct workshops by writing on whiteboards. And then we have made PPTs. And uh, now the PPTs have become uh, so unique that the color itself denotes that this is the uh, PPT for UHV. So many things have taken place since we have joined the program. And so honestly, always accepting that he has to work upon himself and still being such a big pillar for the entire program. Many things we just cannot imagine if Bhaiya is not there. So let's say there is an LDP and if Bhaiya is not there, we have to go and meet the Vice Chancellor. So we feel completely puzzled. How will we proceed like this? So many things Bhaiya has taken up and he has been working consistently upon himself, trying to promote the whole program. And all the time thinking about these things only. So I really congratulate and honor Bhaiya for the deep commitment and contribution that he's making to the whole program and the sincerity with which he's working upon himself. So nice Bhaiya. Thank you. Kumar is uh, see the main thing is the content and Curating the content is uh, a thing that anybody can do. So that's all that I'm doing. Mostly that's what I'm doing. Uh, and Kumar has been you know, very instrumental in uh, developing the content, coming up with the formulations. Every word that we use is uh, we run it through Kumar. So, Kumar, your contribution is uh, to my life is also very huge, and I wish you all the best. Thank you, dear. Yeah. Uh, what I can understand is that we have to learn very many things from LG and Kumar here, and this learning process goes on. Thank you so yeah. much. I, I, I think that with anybody like I said in the beginning that many of the sanskars that are there, we don't come to know about them till they become active. Unless we are able to see deep within, we don't see those sanskars. And uh, the participation of the people who are helping to surface the sanskars is also very huge. I would say that without that, uh, uh, it, it, uh, those sanskars may not surface and we may not come to know what is going on inside. So like uh, we are getting some work done at home and the plumber has run away after 
you know taking so much of our uh, time and you know left the things just like that so now what to do so the sanskar of i used to be very angry earlier i mean people used to uh, not like it and still i think that sanskar is there still uh, so getting angry is not a solution or getting this that how can they do this to me is not a uh, this is happening and we have to look into it i mean we have to find a solution to it so that shift from you know the problem to what is the solution what is my role in the solution that shift is slowly happening because there are so many people who are uh, uh, contributing to surfacing the those sanskars so everybody i think life is nice you know that this uh, is happening very uh, organically i mean there are so many things that we call coincidences but i think they are not really a coincidence as if i can see the meaning in that uh, event it is trying to give me some hint for uh, helping me to see something which i may not have paid attention to otherwise so it is like a uh, if i can see the meaning in it of course i have to see the meaning in it okay thank you uh, thank you so much surface in sanskar that's what he is telling this very important for all of us ji ji so i have one reflection as well as question so putting the reflection like uh, the first interaction with rajul sir in a online workshop Uh, the so you know grave voice so it give me a kind of you know fear that even can i speak to rajul sir and he had come to our college we spoke and later spent good time at kanpur and uh, it gave me an idea that you know the sound may be very uh, i should say heavy but the feelings behind all these sounds are quite uh, you know relatable and is a fatherly figure for entire usb family uh, like kumar bhai mentioned sir i had a question that uh, uh, you know uh, sarmila didi arjun ji uh, even pranav ji all are uh, some uh, you know directed in the direction of value based living and helping others to guide in that direction so if you can put one two lines that how the family motivation has come and you know the common human goal uh, that that has been perceived at the family level if you can put few lines so that will be helpful for many of us and you may see in the uhv activity uh, you know all of us want that yes our family may be in line our you know region may be in line so so many things so if you can put few lines yes thank you uh, there i think uh... my mistake was to try to force uh, i forced arjun to come for a workshop those things are not useful but i gave him a choice that you can stay for one day and if it is meaningful then you can continue that choice had given even you know this was in 2006 and he stayed only for one day but he heard this thing that what i what i am and what i really i mean what i am and what i really want to be there is a gap between these this sentence he heard so then after 6 months he said i will come with you for this uh, another workshop so like that uh, slowly we have uh, been able to uh, you know the family is working on it this this is it's a blessing for all of us to have you in fact i always say you and mohan bhaiya you know sounds very uh, i should say uh, directly means you put the thing what is uh, the reality and sometime we may not accept 
as that point of time but the you know slowly when we look back uh, over the time it was the right input at that moment so my sincere gratitude from whole family ji thank you sir yeah again we we have to uh, be able to see that this uh, we are a family and whatever relationship we can associate with you know we keep saying bhaiya didi you know they might be all the other relationships so if you can see that and we are uh, you know able to get over our uh, over evaluation many times we can work with the real things you know and that is where we want to be as a team it is very important that we uh, rightly evaluate particularly ourselves true sir true it is sir thank you sir bhaiya shamla uh, didi uh, over to you now ji namaste sabko <laughs> so i think already a lot of things have been shared uh, there's not much um, i will say it is just i think this entire uhv program this um, whole process of self development is something of a blessing for each one of us and um, rajul ji has always been taking on this responsibility on himself that he wants to do something for the collective and he sees it as something that he has to do that is um, his commitment to it like kumar bhaiya also mentioned about this continuous improvement thing whether somebody asks him for it or not whether you know he has been given this responsibility or not he sees it as his own responsibility that this is something that has to be done it is and if nobody is doing it then he will pick it on you know take it on himself and say you know okay i will do this because it has to be done so this i think is something of a great quality that we can all learn from and um i think you know uh, in a lot of ways we are Uh, you know as a family we are trying to do whatever we think is right uh, we are trying to guide the children in a manner that we feel that uh, you know will be helpful for them and of course you know to be useful to society along with that so i think as a process we are all trying to do the same things just as we develop as we see things more and more we try to do what we think is right at every step so um you know i i feel very fortunate and blessed that i have such a family such a supportive family so um and i think to a large extent it is also how we look at it there will always be few disturbances here and there um there will always be opinions that are different but underlying that at the core this thing that we are all connected i think that is very useful to see and um, i feel very fortunate that's all i wanted to say thank you thank you so much shamla didi thank you very much rajul bhaiya for your uh, sharing